Hey everyone, it's Bethany and we are finally starting some Halloween crafts. So I am so excited. We have purchased Halloween costumes. We are ready to go. And now we are just waiting patiently for Halloween to begin. And if you have ever been a parent to young children, you know that countdowns are very fun and they really help with that question of, is it time yet? When is, when is it Halloween? When is it Christmas? So I think it's gonna be really fun this year. I always do a Christmas countdown, but I found an SVG that is a Halloween countdown and I thought that would be really, really fun. So I'm excited to do this with you guys today. I have a blank wood sign. It came in a natural fair wood, so it was unfinished. I purchased this from Target. I'll try to link it down below for you. And I did put a couple finishes of chalk paint on top. So I did a couple layers of chalk paint, which I will also link below, it's my favorite chalk paint to use and then I'm also going to be using a couple different materials so we are going to be using iron-on I'm going to be using everyday iron-on and then I'm also going to be using this really pretty copper glitter iron-on that I just got in my first ever mystery box so I'll link my mystery box unboxing up in the corner for you in case you missed it because I signed up for my very first mystery box I was very happy with what came inside it was really fun it was like Christmas and this was one of the products that came in so it's a very pretty glittery orange and I think it's going to be really pretty on this sign so it's just going to add a little fun pizzazz to it I think that's it in terms of materials I also will bring out my heat press mat and then I'm going to be using my 9x9 nine nine, um, easy press for this craft before we hop into the design space, um, I'm also going to remind you that coming up on November 1st, we're going to be doing 15 days in a row of my Christmas gift guide with Cric for crickets, and I think it's going to be really fun. I'm really excited, so be sure if you are just stopping by for this video, be sure you're subscribed because we are going to be doing 15 straight days in a row of crafting, and it's going to be crafts that you can specifically make as gifts. So it'll be just in time to start getting everything created and wrapped and give to your friends and family. So I'm really excited. Okay, let's do our little question of the day. If you're new here, we just do a little question just to um, get everybody commenting in the comment section and telling us um, just a fun thing about them. So it's all based around a question that we just pick out of this little jar. Oh, this is a fun one. So this one says thunderstorms or snowstorms? Goodness. Okay, I will answer in just a bit, but make sure you hop down into the comment section, give me your answer, and I can't wait to hear what you guys say too. This is actually a hard one for me to answer because I think they're both really, really fun. Okay, let's hop into the design space. We are going to get our SVG all sized and ready to go, and we'll get cut out and pressed on this board. Okay, so here is the SVG that I'm going to be using. I did purchase this on Design Bundles, and I will link it in the description box below in case you want to recreate this craft too at your own craft table. So what I'm going to do first and foremost is I'm going to come over to my shapes, and my wood base that I am going to be pressing this on is 11 by 14. So I am going to unlock this. I'm going to come over to my width and say 11, and for my height I'll say 14. And then I'm going to make this white just because that is the color of the wood sign that I'm going to be working working with. So now I'm just going to move my little SVG over, make sure I can fit them both in the same place. I'm going to send this to the back. That way I can drag my design right on top of it. Come here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock this and I am just going to kind of elongate this just a little bit, just so it fits my sign a little bit. And it can actually take a little bit of stretching and resizing while still maintaining a really good look. So we are going Good. We have about half an inch roughly on each side, maybe even an inch um, on, on the um, right and left, but that looks pretty good to my eye. I might just tweak it just a little bit more. That way we have even um, edges around. Okay, so I like how that looks. So now one thing I want to show you is now that I have it sized, I'm going to go ahead and just remove my... Um, little template behind there. Um, now I'm going to show you what would happen if you just clicked make it. So if you just click it, make it now, what you'll see is it just places all of the numbers all haphazardly all over your mat. Now that's fine for this one because we're going to be placing these separately anyway on our mat, but for the black we really want all of those pieces to be cut out exactly how they are on a canvas. So I'm going to go ahead and click cancel and what I'm going to do is I am going to come through and I'm going to find all of the 
black pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and just select by holding down my shift button. I'm going to come over to my layers panel and I'm going to select every single piece that is going to be cut out in black. So that would be my numbers and that's also going to be the word Halloween. So I'm going to go grab Halloween and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say weld. So now welding those together is going to make it all one layer over here and they're going to cut together. So now when I go through to say make it, it's going to cut exactly like you see it on there. And then these pieces of course are going to cut separately because I want them to be um, placed within this image over here. So it's telling me I'm going to need a 12 by 24 mat. And if you do not have a 12 by 24 mat, what you can do is you can just cut, um, not weld these together and you could cut the Halloween separately and that would skinny it up just enough so that you could um, do a 12 by 12 mat. Okay, so let me double check. Yes, if you just took this piece off, um, you could put it on another mat and um, be just fine with your 12 by 20 or 12 by 12 mat. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, I do have a 12 by 24 mat, so I'm going to go ahead and use mine. I'm going to go ahead and mirror my image because I am working with iron on, and then I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Okay, so for my Everyday Iron-On, I'm going to go ahead and select Everyday Iron-On. And then for my glitter, what I'm going to do is I have my dial set to custom for both, um, just because that's the way I craft with my Explorer 2. But for glitter, what I'll do is I'll come back in here, and I will come up to my material, and I will say Glitter Iron-On for the orange um, glitter. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and again, I'm using the Everyday Iron-On for the black. I will go ahead and send that through my machine to get it cut and then we will get weeding and pressing. Okay, so I'm placing my material shiny side down on the mat and that shiny side is the built-in carrier sheet. So you wanna make sure that that is shiny side down because that is why you also mirror your image. Okay, so now I'm going to load my machine and I just keep my roll on here. Helps me just save material when it comes to cutting at the end and went ahead and clicked start and this is going to get cut out and I'll time this to see how long this takes. So that first piece is done cutting so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this next piece right on my mat and I'm going to be careful um, with how I place it on there because this is not a 12 by 12 sheet so I want to make sure I have enough and I also want to make sure that I save as much material as I can because I have another project coming up. It might be tomorrow, but I have another project coming up with this glitter iron on. So again, shiny side down on the mat. You'll see an obvious shiny side that goes face down. I'm going to switch my settings. So I'm going to make sure that I have glitter iron on as my setting. I'm at the custom for my dial and I just do my settings within design space just because that's how I do it on my joy and my maker. So I'm already set up that way with my workflow. Okay, so while that other one is going, what I'm going to do is because um, this is for a pretty long piece, I'm just going to lay this on a mat so it stays nice and straight while I weed it out. And I'm going to start at a corner. Now this piece took, um, I can't remember if I told you, but this took about four to five minutes to cut out. So not too long at all. And I'm just going to go around the edge first and take away all my background pieces first. Okay, so my glitter is done cutting, so I'll take that off in just a second, but I'll get this all ready to go here. Okay, so thunderstorms or snowstorms. Okay, I have to say both, but if I really, really had to choose, and I guess that is the question, I'd have to say snowstorms only because... I love how quiet it is when like there's snow out. Even when you wake up and there's been a snowstorm and the snowstorm has already passed, like the world just seems so quiet. And I also love that anticipation, especially when I was a kid, that anticipation of a snowstorm meaning school is possibly gonna be canceled the next day. Um, so it's just, I don't know, I love the quietness of it, but I really also can't turn down a really nice thunderstorm as well because those are just cozy as well. Okay, so now I'm going to go through, I'm going to actually do this little 
um, hat first. So the, he, I didn't point it out on InDesign Space, but this little hat um, is on the 31st, which is really, really cute. So that's the only number that you're going to weed a little bit differently. And then the rest of them, I'm just going to go through and take out all the little middle pieces of these numbers. And then I'll do the same with the letters up in the word Halloween. So very, very easy. I just use, usually get a few stacks on my weeding tool and then just kind of clean it off and keep going. Okay, so now I'm just working on the middles of the words in, or the letters in Halloween, getting them all ready to go, making sure I'm picking up all of my little scrap pieces that come out of those words because you don't want to leave them on the carrier sheet, which is sticky, so it's easy for those pieces to cling. I'm going to go ahead and take this off and I'm going to turn it around because once you turn it around and see it visually the right way is when you can really notice if you missed any pieces. So I like to go through and just scan, making sure I didn't miss any pieces, which I did not. And now I will go ahead and do my glitter. And so I did notice that I have a little piece of iron on scrap just straggling. So I'm trying to get that off of my sheet because if it stays on there, it will press onto my project. And then I'll be really sad because it was something that I could have avoided. Okay. So that's all good. I can set this to the side and weed out my glitter. Okay. So I'm cutting out and being careful because it's a little hard to see on glitter, but I'm cutting out my little design, but I'm only just cutting out the chunk of design and I'm not cutting between the words just yet because that can be really tricky to see. So I'm going to go ahead and weed it first and then I will um, go ahead and make sure to cut between them when I can see it a little bit better. Let me zoom in because you guys are going to want to see this beautiful glitter. Okay. This is really exciting. So first of all, the cut setting worked like a charm. So glitter um, iron on worked really great. And now I'm just going to take my time, but it is so pretty. Oops, that little piece. There we go. It is so, so pretty. So I'm just going to go slow and remove all of the pieces that I do not need. And I like to start with the outside first. And if some of the pieces pull up, you can just kind of grab them with your finger, like some of the letters, and just kind of push them back down. Okay. And I'm checking to see if any of that glitter comes off. Very minimal comes off. If you guys have been crafting with me for a while, you know that glitter makes me a little bit nervous because I'm a little bit more of a clean crafter. But glitter iron-on has been something that I've actually gotten really obsessed with lately. In fact, I just did a, a order to Expressions Vinyl after I got my mystery box and I ordered a lot of glitter. So I'm excited for that box to come in because I'm going to be using some of that glitter on um, another Halloween project that is coming up really soon. So we have, from here on out, we are purely working on fall and Halloween and I'm really really excited it's gonna be such a fun lineup of crafts okay so this little piece is the dot to the eye so that needs to stay right there okay so I need to grab this little middle and this one I find glitter iron-on to be just a tad more delicate to weed so I go a little bit slower um, than just regular iron-on, but it's still very easy to weed. I just go just a little bit slower because it, to me, tends to want to come up like adhesive vinyl does when, when weeding. Okay, so now once I'm done weeding, I'll be able to cut these two pieces apart because once it's weeded, you can really see a defined line where you can cut. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this over. Look how pretty that is. 
You guys will see it even more when I put it on that white, but it's so pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and make sure I have everything weeded. I think this little dot to the eye moved just a little bit, so I'm gonna move him back where he goes. And this backing is sticky, so you can just kind of move that little piece, stick it back down. That looks better to me. Okay, so now I can take my scissors and I can just go through and cut right between those letters much easier than I would have if I had tried to do that before weeding. That is just too risky for me and I have definitely cut my material or cut into a letter before and it's so sad when that happens. It's just so sad. So just be as careful as you can. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab my wooden base and we're gonna get it preheated and ready to press. Okay, so I just have a little piece of parchment paper here that I like to use when I am um, working with painted wood and I just reuse this so I just fold it up and reuse it each and every time. So I have my easy press set to 300 and I'm just gonna go over my wood for about five seconds just to make sure that it's nice and preheated. And then I'll move my little parchment paper down and preheat the bottom a little bit as well. Now I painted this 24 hours ago, so it is really good and dry. Okay. It's very preheated. It's telling me to hurry and craft. Okay, so it's good to go. And now what I'm going to do is I looked up my heat settings and it's going to be 300 degrees for 40 seconds for both my everyday iron on and then my glitter. So I'm trying to decide if I want to do it all in one press. And if I do it all in one press, what I would need to do is I would need to cut my carrier sheet here so I could place this in here. So I think I might just go ahead and do that. Um, should I do that? Actually, you know what I'll do is I'm going to get everything centered where I like it. Okay. So whoops. And do you see this little 30 down here? It might be hard to see, but there is a little piece that didn't get quite perfectly weeded. Thank goodness my eye caught that. And I even checked. Okay, that's okay. Late night crafting tonight. It's just about 10 o'clock, so that almost got me, but it did not. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down my trick-or-treat just to make sure I have everything kind of centered where I want it and I do think that's looking good okay so with that place there what I'm going to do make sure it's sent make sure it's really straight okay okay I think that looks good okay so what I'm going to do since this is sticky I am going to come here I'm going to peel up this side since I have it all straight I'm going to peel this side up just like so, and I'm just going to cut right here. That way everything else stays centered because it'll be easier to center everything once I have this big part down. And you guys can do this completely different if you want to. This just makes sense to me, and I always encourage you just to craft in the way that makes you feel the most confident. But now I already know that this is exactly where it needs to be. So, and I can recenter this as I need it. But what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to come through here and really trim down these pieces because you don't want your carrier sheets to touch or overlap in any way. Okay, so I'm just going to trim through here. And you can pull up your SVG in design space. So I'm going to do that as well. And pulling it up in design space just allows you to really see where everything is supposed to be located. So countdown is supposed to be right at the two. I'm going to trim this down. Right at the two and the six. So it's kind of just like this. And it's actually up a little bit. Okay. So right about there. That looks good. Okay, and I'm doing this all at once just so I only have to press it one time. And then this Halloween is 
let's see, the middle of that L is supposed to be right in the middle of that U. That's why I like to pull up my design because you can use reference points and make sure that's nice and straight. I think that looks good to me. Now, the best thing about iron on is you can peel it up and you can put it back down. But another thing is you can push it up this way and you can really take a look and step back from your design. You can even go and kind of place it on your wall and then step back, make sure you like how it looks and then set it back down. So I like that as well. Okay, and then with this piece down here, I think I do need to trim a little bit at the top. And again, I'm doing this just so that I only have to do one press instead of doing all the black and then repressing the black in order to do the um, orange, which you can do, it's gonna be fine. But if you can do less presses, then it saves time, plus it saves some heat. Okay. So we are good to go, just like that. Okay, I think that looks really good to me. So what I'm going to do, is I'm gonna clean up my little space here, make sure everything's all ready to go. I'll zoom in and we will start pressing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my parchment paper. And I am going to reference my little heat guide here to make sure I have everything ready to go. So 300 for 40 seconds, and it's going to be a firm pressure and a cool peel. So I'm gonna have to do this in chunks. So I'm gonna start in the upper right, and I'm gonna press the Cricut button, firm pressure, and I have it on my heat press mat, and I also removed my craft mat from under that, just because sometimes the heat mat gets a little warm, and Sometimes that makes my mat kind of bubble a little bit and it goes back down, but I don't like to do it if I don't have to. Okay, so we are just about at 40 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it over and repress again. Okay, and then I'm gonna move my parchment paper down as well. Come down to this bottom left quadrant and I'm going to do firm pressure again, and then I will do the final part. Okay, so that final press is done. So what I'm going to do is I am going to remove my parchment paper, and then I'm going to take this off of the heat press mat, because that retains a lot of heat, and just let that help cool down, because this is a completely cool peel. So I'm gonna let that take its time. You'd ne you don't wanna peel it too quickly, or it just comes right off. So I'm gonna let that completely cool, and then we'll peel it up. Okay, so I think it's pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my first little piece up here. And I like to peel in the order that I um, press. So I did the top first, so that's where I'm going to go ahead and peel first. And so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that top. It came off great. And now I'm monitoring as I'm peeling and making sure I'm not seeing any lifting. Because if I'm seeing any lifting, what I would do is just lay back my um, carrier sheet and I would repress it but that all laid down really nice and the texture of the glitter is so neat I love it so much so I'm just gonna try to get another little piece up and I'm sometimes use my weeding tool but I'm scared I'm careful not to scratch my wood when doing so there we go I'll get this little piece okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and peel I'm not seeing any lifting it looks great, so cute. And then a little piece here, and I'll peel off that glitter. It looks great, oh my goodness, I love this. And I love the colors, I love the subtle glitter look too. I think that's really, really fun. So let me know if you guys enjoyed this. I thought this was a really fun way to start off all of our Halloween crafts. We have quite a few coming up and I'm really excited to show you how I'm going to be decorating my space with some of the crafts that I'm going to be doing. And I think tomorrow you're going to really enjoy the craft as well. It's really, really sweet. So um, tomorrow is also some glitter, I believe. I think that one's tomorrow. So be sure you guys are subscribed if you want to see even more of what's coming to my craft table for this fall. It's a very beautiful content calendar that's going to be coming out. So I'm really excited to share with you what I'm going to be doing. All right, everyone, be sure to answer the question in the comments. Let me know what you're up to, and I will see you all in the next video.